the 2K Sports Halftime Show. We welcome you back. Ernie Johnson with Shaquille O'Neal, Kenny the Jet Smith. Quite the tussle there in the first half, huh? A competitive matchup for the Lakers in the first quarter. Their biggest deficit was six points in the opening period. It took them a while to get their legs under them, but they took off in the second quarter and are holding a three-point lead at the break. And let's get your thoughts, Kenny, on the Lakers. Well, it's never easy to go on the road in the NBA, no matter what the matchup is. But I think they like playing the role of the villain. Their effort has been fantastic, and they've done all that they can do to keep this crowd quiet. And over to Shaq now, your take on the Celtics. It's their lack of points in the paint that stood out to me. Uh, their focus on the perimeter. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't love that, that plan. You need to have a presence inside to be an effective offense, you know? Geez, stop shooting jumpers, dude. And that wraps up the halftime show. Third quarter set to begin in just a few. And after a fairly even first couple of quarters, this second half could turn out to be a great one as both teams trying to gain an edge. You got to like what we're seeing from LeBron James. They've leaned on him to provide a lot of offense, and that's how he likes it. And you know what? They've come at him a few different ways defensively, and nothing has slowed him down. All right, Grant, you were the first rookie to ever lead all-star fan balloting. That would have made you a team captain these days. So my question, who would be your first selection in the all-star draft? Well, back then, no question. It would have been the GOAT, Michael Jordan. But today, hmm, it would have been today's GOAT, LeBron James. He just has the ability, whether a regular season game, playoff game, or even in an all-star game, to elevate the play of everyone who's on his team. So no question, Captain Hill would pick LeBron James. You're such a front runner, Grant. Hey, come on now, you can't blame me. <laughs> Filling out the wings, it's Smart and Brown. Jason Tatum out there with Tristan Thompson. And it's Walker in at the point. That's who's in the game for the Celtics. Now here's Tatum. A reliable go-to guy for them. He's averaging around 26 and a half a game. Tipped. And he gets it back. And there's the shot clock violation. Couldn't get the shot off in time. How about that strong defensive performance for this half's mobile one block? I mean, perfection. That's about as good a defensive play as you'll see. Instant reaction to get a hand to that shot. Here's Caldwell Pope. Well, he hasn't put up any points yet in this one. And here in the second half of play, we're just over a minute in. And he lobs it up top and finished off by Davis. Well, you describe AD's games and you start running out of superlatives. I mean, when this guy is healthy, he dominates in a different fashion, but in similar ways to Tim Duncan. And what's really interesting is that Tatum really took a big leap forward last year. And the statistics back it up. His scoring, rebounding, blocks, steals, everything. He improved in almost every measurable category. That one falls for Tatum. And what's amazing about the increase in Tatum's production, he did it on a team filled with other stars who were producing as well. That is so true. I mean, these were not hollow numbers. And that's when you know you're playing very well, when you can dominate while working within the flow of the game. And the Celtics making a change here. Tice is checked in. And so Tatum nails both of them. Well, Los Angeles shooting the ball at 46% from the floor. Pass to James. Tries it from 16. The shot comes out, and it's Boston the other way. Third quarter of play with just over one and a half minutes gone by. Here's Tice. And that misses. That would have put him up. Good offense squaring up against better D there. You got to appreciate that stop. Walker with the steal. 
Here's Smart. And a foul called on the way up. So he'll take two from the free throw line. <laughs> no debate there. He got hammered. Blatant contact. Straightforward call. Simple. And the free throw is good. Now leading by one. And the Lakers making a change here. Kuzma's checked in. So he gets them both. He's as solid as it gets from the line. I mean, give him the opportunity. He's cashing in on those. Two minutes gone in this third quarter now. Schroeder against Smart. Deflected! Let's the three fly. Ojale, no good. The Lakers have gotten only one of four shots to fall in the second half. Schroeder can't get it to go. Clearly out of rhythm now, guys. I mean, just one for five to begin the second half. Outside, Williams. Pass to Ogilvy. Now Williams. Shot clock at six. Here's Brown. Boston, no good that time either. The Lakers trail. You know, you look at Anthony Davis, you watch him play, and he just does so much good stuff on the floor. Scores the ball inside and outside, can defend at the rim or on the perimeter. He really is the complete package. Now here's Kuzma. Well, he hasn't scored yet, but I'm sure that'll change. Uses the glass to finish the layup. You know, once Kuzma has the position he wants inside, he does his thing fearlessly. And Boston has possession. The Lakers getting their last shot to go. 43 seconds left in the third. Ogilvy, no good. The Lakers have got just two of six in the second half. Outside Schroeder. Kuzma, outside. Pass to Harrell. Here's Caldwell Pope. And here's Davis. Tice defending. Fade away. No good on the shot. Most nights this shot would have been his, but the defender gave him just enough trouble. Now, here's Brown. Oh, got it off in time, but it's no good. Tie game in Boston. All right, we're going to step aside for just a second, but join us right back here for the start of quarter number four next.